Hello, welcome to the next in our series of webcasts on demystifying IFRS 9. I'm Sandra Thompson, I lead our global accounting technical function for financial instruments and I'm here today with Voon Ho Chen. Voon Ho is a banking partner in Singapore and leads the work to implement IFRS 9 in that part of the world. We're going to be talking today about measuring ECL and this is the first of two webcasts on this subject. The first thing to bear in mind is that you do need to measure ECL in all stages of the model under IFRS 9, including from when you first originate a loan, but many of the principles are the same. So Voon Ho, can you tell us a bit more about what the standard says? Sure, Sandra. Okay, the first thing is IFRS 9, you need to make a provision on day one itself. So you do not need to wait for objective evidence of impairment like what you have in IS 39. So as a minimum, you provide 12 months expected credit loss, and if there's a significant increase in credit, you provide lifetime. Now, the standard doesn't tell you how to calculate this 12 month or lifetime. There's no specific approach. So what you do depends on what is your starting point. But IFRS 9 does say that whatever method you use, it must have the following re uh, meet the following requirement, which is it has to be unbiased, and you have to consider a range of possible outcomes, and then you have to probability weight those outcomes and discount them. And after that, you need to actually look at what is the segmentation, the correct segmentation. So what do we see in practice? What we see in practice is a whole range, but the most common is to use regulatory data from Basel, which is PD, LGD, and EAD. And for those who don't, they could be using other methods, including mapping to external ratings, or they could be using uh, things like uh, row rates or migration analysis. So let's look at one, one of the most common ones. Using Basel regulatory data, you cannot just use it on its own. You need to actually make an adjustment to make it IFRS 9 compliant. The first thing that you need to adjust is for the PD, for example. It is actually through the cycle for Basel, and the typical credit cycle is between 8 to 10 years. So you need to adjust that to make it point in time. After that, you also need to uh, remove any prudent bias and also regress it to macroeconomic factors to make it forward-looking. This can actually be done at a portfolio level. For example, you can calculate it for one big corporate portfolio, or if you have more granular information, you can calculate it at large corporates, small and medium enterprise, project finance, and more and more different classification. This uh, segmentation can be similar to Basel, or it may be different depending on what is the data that you have to do those calculations that I've just mentioned. Now, in addition to 12 month expected credit loss, you will then need to make uh, projected or make certain calculations, for example, through a Markov chain adjustment to make it lifetime ECL. In addition to the probability of default, you also need to look at the exposure at default. And for that, you look at what is the contractual cash flow. But in addition to the contractual cash flow, you also need to consider prepayments. For example, mortgages. You need to assess and build a, a prepayment profile and assess what is going to be the impact to the cash flow. In addition to prepayment, for certain type of loans, you also need to look at what are the possible drawdowns and what is the expected life of these drawdowns based on the behavioral basis if they are considered to be revolvers under IFRS 9. Thank you, Voon Ho. The final element of the calculation is the loss given default. So if the borrower does default, how much loss results? And here again, there may be more than one scenario that needs to be considered. For example, on a default, a bank may either foreclose on a loan and sell collateral. They may seek to implement some kind of workout strategy, perhaps renegotiate the loan, or they may actually sell the loan asset and they may need to consider all of those three scenarios and probability weight them. And one important point to bear in mind is that if part of recovering a loan is to actually sell the loan asset itself, then that is one of the scenarios to be considered. Just to recap, measuring ECL is not going to be easy. It will apply in all stages of the IFRS 9 model. There will be a number of different scenarios that need to be considered. Most commonly banks are starting with Basel regulatory capital data, but it does need to be adjusted for IFRS 9 purposes. That's it for today. I hope you'll join us next time when we'll talk in a bit more detail about measuring ECL. And if you would like to subscribe for the whole series, then please click the subscribe button. Bye-bye.